Hello, this is Ben from Asking Alexandria, and you're listening to the Rock Sound Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Rock Sound Podcast. I'm Will Cross, junior editor at the magazine. Joining me as always and forever, Tamsin Wills. Hello. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. A little bit tired. Long week. I've had a hectic week. Went to see the Gospel Youth the other night. That was a lovely time. Had a very lovely time with Jack. (laughs) Didn't we, Jack? Oh, it was brilliant. Oh, here he is already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say... It was almost a podcast night out, but Will wasn't around to have it. Will so. didn't couldn't bother go. to turn off. Oh, no, yeah. I couldn't go. <laughs> right, setting the record straight. <laughs> uh, no, I'm glad it was good. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so up for the podcast this week. Excited? Well, it would be bad if I said no, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, always up for the podcast. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of things going on. Yeah, there is. There is a lot of news this week. And uh, Jack Rogers, hello. Hello, Will. Good week? Yeah, it's been good. Um, this week it's been a bit colder, which means that I've made the decision rather than wearing my hair up, it is now down for the season and the beanie hats are out. And Tamsin hadn't realised she'd never seen me with my hair down. I hadn't. Now. Really? Yeah. I met him for pizza the other night and I didn't actually recognise him from behind because <laughs> I'm so used to seeing him with it up in the bun or yeah. something. No way. Um, yeah. And now it's... It's longer than mine. Yeah, it oh, is yeah. long. You've got yeah. a mane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I'm, I'm very much into it. And so. UK long hair. <laughs> oh, shout <laughs> out. Has, hashtag UK long so hair. So is this for the foreseeable now then? This is, isn't just like a few day thing. Oh, this no, is. it's going to be like... until keep, until, him, until, keep him warm in the winter <laughs> months. Until, 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 until it gets hot again or until like I get sick of it. So Mate, but, into that. Yeah, th- this is my look. This is my look now. Like, it's a strong look. The Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Into that. Um, so last week we had an absolutely mega week. We had Pete Wentz from Fallout Boy on the show. Absolutely amazing. And we had Mr. Patty Walters from As It Is. Also absolutely amazing. Absolute bumper week. Huge shout out to those guys. This week we are celebrating the release of Stephen with Sirens. Divisive, brilliant new album, Gossip. Uh, chatting to Nick Martin, a return to the podcast about how the band are feeling on the eve of its release and we've also got Mr. Matt Welsh from While She Sleeps uh, to talk all things of DIY success of URWE and also some um, pretty crazy little hints into uh, the future of While She Sleeps and um, what could be a uh, quite the left turn but we'll have to wait and see so stick around for that but first Tam's in the news. So much news. Um, Linkin Park have announced a tribute show for Chester Bennington taking place on October 27th at Los Angeles Hollywood Bowl and they have announced that literally everyone is going to be playing with them haven't they jack absolutely everybody we've got we've got ollie sykes we've got blink 182 machine gun kelly guys from corn system of a down ryan from yellow card it's mad so what a show one hell of a lineup um lincoln park have also released a really emotional touching tribute video for one more light if you haven't seen that go to rocksound.tv and you can watch it there Corey Taylor has delivered a really moving speech on addiction at this year's Rock to Recovery Awards after he received the Icon Award. Real Friends have celebrated seven years as a band with a series of special acoustic sessions called Something Old, Something New. The first two are online now. Head to our website to check those out. We finally have new Asking Alexandria music in the form of Into the Fire. Is it a banger, guys? Big Are we up, saying bang- it's a banger? Oh, such a banger. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a banger. It's a, banger. It's a, cer- it's a certified banger. <laughs> Um, the Ghost Inside have released a statement thanking fans for two years of support since their accident, sending all the love in the world out to those guys. Seaway have announced a UK tour. Evanescence have announced a new album called Synthesis. They've released a new song called Imperfection and they've announced a UK tour. Uh, and then Paris fans can volunteer to support LGBTQ equality via the Ali Coalition during their upcoming US tour. Head to rocksound.tv if you want to find out some more information, if you're interested and want to get involved. Finally then, All Time Low and Pierce the Veil vale have announced a special UK tour together. It's going to be pretty big, isn't it? It's oh. going to... It's going to be one hell of a night. One, it, so, oh, he's going first. Go on, Jack. I mean, well, I mean like, I'm going to say this is the sort of tour which... We wait all year for, and then when it comes, you fall off your chair when you see it. For sure. Like, um, I mean, I don't know what... 
<laughs> I'm going to be down the front, like in the standing. I'm not going to have a chair. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh no, I mean like, oh no, I mean like when I saw the news, I fell off the chair. Oh, fell off your chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, why are you taking a chair with you? Ali Pali, fold up chairs, Ali Pali. Yeah, sit on the deck chair in the middle. It's like, oh, the these young people jumping around. As soon as Piers Avell come on stage, you just fall off. <laughs> oh yeah man like it's gonna be one of the biggest nights of next year um in terms of who's gonna steal the night though i mean it, it's a really tough one because i mean both bands have got such a like massive arsenal of bangers now um to be honest like i think it's gonna like it's gonna depend on who delves the best into their back catalogs i think so if we've got atl doing stuff like for baltimore or pierce Avell doing things like you know maybe something like phantom power and ludicrous speed like it could go either way so um get creative guys I think it depends a bit on like just who's more up for it when it comes mm. out. I think, and I think it depends on the crowd as well because I think there's a nice crossover with Pierce the Veil and All Time Low fans, and people know that the bands are friends as well, which makes it such a mates fest. Like it's a big scale mates fest. But I think the way that All Time Low perform in these arenas, like it's so natural. You can never imagine that they're ever in rooms smaller than like five, six thousand people. And they just pull out all the stops and like they've got a back catalogue they've got of such like so expansive as and especially with last young renegade being like the pop album pop opus it is like they could pull out all the stops and make ali pali seem small while pierce of l they'll just riff and flamenco the place <laughs> and, and, and like could dominate it like it's it's all up you can't really call it. So many CO2 cannons as well. That's what I'm hoping for. That glitter. It's going to be amazing. Tam's in. <laughs> glitter. I said, no, I'm going to glitter up. <laughs> <laughs> don't know why I said glitter I'm, there. I'm going to sparkle my way through the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am starting a petition for All Time Low to do So Wrong It's Right and Full. Oh, they can play shout. some other songs if they've got time, but I think it's only fair. <laughs> the US got it, so... If that comes to Ali Pali, I'm going to have a very, very lovely time. Walking on heads. Sparkling. <laughs> Sparkling on heads. Always. Sparkling as I do it. <laughs> so, um, interview one, um, Nick Martin, gossip release day. Uh, very kind of him to come back to the podcast. Super excited. First person to return. Um, so, I chatted to him about what is definitely the most divisive album of the year. Uh, you know, I think that I can't wait to see people's reactions to this album. I think it's going to be a real kind of talking point just in terms of music as a whole this year. Uh, so I brought all that to him about how they're feeling, how it's kind of pulled them uh, back into the light as well after a really tough couple of years. So yeah, here we go. Mr. Nick Martin on Gossip Album Release Day. Thank you so much for coming back on the podcast. I mean, what we're, uh, what we're doing today is basically this is going to go out on release day. So we just wanted to kind of chat to you guys about um, just yeah, how you're feeling ahead of it and sort of listening back. And now people have started to hear the album as well and that sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, just like to kick off, how does it feel now that that build up is coming to an end? Like, has it been nerve wracking? I mean, last, when I spoke to you and Kelly and it was, you guys seemed super confident. So how's, how's that felt? Yeah, I mean, I think more so now we're even more confident. You know, it's actually been great, uh, you know, to play new songs on this on the tour we've been on and seeing and hearing that, you know, the kids are singing a, along louder to the new songs than the old songs here, and that's been an amazing uh, reception so far in response. I think, uh, you know, there there is a lot of nerves, but I feel like it's just all good nerves. You know, it's uh, it's like... I feel like if we weren't getting those nerves or those butterflies, then we're not doing something right, you know? It, it just feels really good to uh, to know that it's finally coming out in a couple of days. And obviously by the time this comes out, it will be out. And I think uh, we're just ready. We're just really, really ready for this to finally uh, be able to uh, hit everyone's ears, you know? We're just ready for everyone to hear it. Amazing. It's yeah, I can imagine time. that. Yeah, I can imagine, man. Like, does it feel gratifying as well? Because even before the album's come out, there's already been, like, huge success. Like, Legends has become the uh, the US Olympic team anthem and things like that. Like, does that feel really gratifying? Absolutely. It's crazy. Uh, you know, over the past few days, actually, I've been watching TV. I was watching uh, uh, American football uh, yesterday, and I heard... Um, I heard one of our songs on the football game and then I was watching ESPN Sports and Legends was on there. So it's crazy to see um, songs from the album already 
starting to pop up in different uh, random spots. You know, my buddies um, work out at a um, at some gym back at home, and they've been at the gym, and they've heard legends come on there. So it's crazy just to see and hear the song just kind of, you know, sporadically kind of popping up in different places, and the album's not even out yet, you know? It just feels... Uh, it feels really big and it just feels really special. Yeah. Amazing, man. Yeah, because in the lead up to the album as well, you've said uh, you said a lot about you know um, the idea of you guys were very fearless in making this album. Yeah. And um, do you think that more bands need to be like that? Do you think more bands kind of need to start from the ground up and things like that, kind of like you guys have done, and kind of rip up the rule book somewhat? Like, do you think some bands maybe it's, are scared of doing that? I don't know. You know, for me, I, I feel like every band is different, every artist is different, and. Uh, that's okay you know I, I, I definitely don't want to be one of those bands or one of those artists that uh, feels like I have to like tell our other artists to do the same thing that we're doing you know every artist is different you know obviously the best advice I could ever give to any um, aspiring musician or artist is to push themselves and to think outside the box and uh, feel vulnerable feel uh, um, feel like you're like you're out of your comfort zone like that's where i that's where i feel like we shine is when we say damn like this feels different but it feels really good so like let's go with that and i i I, you know and i've always been inspired by artists that have done that as well you know my favorite artists are bob dylan queen the beatles you know and those are all artists that took tons of risks you know they never sounded like the previous records ever and um you know it's not that uh we aspire to be that, but it's definitely inspiring to us to, to you know, push ourselves and not play it safe. Yeah, definitely. Because I remember last time we spoke, you uh, you were saying you were listening to a lot of The Clash when you were making this album, things like that as well. Like, do you, are you very we inspired? Yeah, yeah. So, are you very inspired by by those sort of bands, those bands that didn't, you know, never played by any rules and essentially kind of uh, reinvented the wheel every album? Then is that what you guys kind of want to do in, as you go into the future? Absolutely, we do. Absolutely, we do. And I'm sure our next album won't sound like won't sound like gossip. You know, I, I think that, and that's that's not necessarily a conscious decision. I think that that's how we all think, and that's how we all are as musicians is just constantly reinventing our own wheel, not necessarily any kind of musical wheel, but just our own. And and yeah, the Clash is a, is another fucking great example. You know, like they start off with like this really grungy nasty sounding like punk rock band and then they you know slowly infuse reggae and um like more like worldly tones for their music and like they, they wrote fucking amazing songs and they didn't care and they always reinvented themselves they always looked different they always you know they they just had such a rad style about them that it was always across the board and that, that's that's inspiring to me and they never lost touch of who they were they were still the clash you know yeah, for sure. Like, I totally agree. I mean, as well, like you've used the term um, sort of that you you didn't want to become like a bullshit artist. Um, is that very much yeah. so? Is that kind of? Do you feel now that the kind of like the album's done and it's getting so much success? Do you feel really validated in that? And that it's kind of like you stuck to your guns. You did something out of the box, and it's it's really been pulled off. Is that that must be such a good feeling? Absolutely. And you know, and you know, like there's a lot of artists that get really bogged down by the negative press or the negative comments from people. And, and usually from those kind of comments, like that's my shit. Like I love, I love when it pushes somebody to the point where they feel like they have to say something negative about what we're doing. Cause then it makes you feel that validates me. That goes, damn, see, we didn't play it safe. Like I'd be more bummed out if people said, Oh, awesome. This sounds just like the previous record or damn, this sounds just like, let's cheers. You know, that would bum me out. Like that would be like shit. Like, we didn't, we're, we're not reinventing ourselves. We're not pushing ourselves. And, and hell yeah, I stand behind that. That, that makes us not bullshit artists. Cause if we wanted to release albums or songs that, you know, were popular before and we're trying to, you know, reimagine that or trying to, you know, put out another song that sounds like James Dean or if you can't hang, like that makes us bullshit artists. That isn't that, that that's us not pushing ourselves. That's saying that's us saying like we can just capitalize on what we've already done and just like try to make it just a little bit different and just still sell records and still sell more tickets. Like fuck that. You know, like I would rather I'd rather the band fucking end tomorrow knowing that we we took those risks and that we weren't bullshit artists. Like I can sleep at night knowing that. You know, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night 
knowing that we didn't push ourselves and we just created a space like that. That's, that's not fun to me, you know? Yeah, man, definitely. That's that's so cool. I mean, like as well, and with that kind of mindset, like breaking in these songs live, like you played um, the title track on K Rock and that sort of thing. Like, how's it been premiering these songs live? Has it felt like a real moment for the band? It does, dude, and they're they're amazing moments. There has not been a single negative moment playing those new songs. Like it just feels right, and it feels like us, and it feels like it's the right direction for the band and. And we can tell from the crowd response, you know, with or without, with or without that, I, I'm validated in what we're doing. But even more so when we play these new songs and kids are singing along and just like yelling and just like actually like, feeling it and there's emotion behind it. It's like, damn, see, like, we're, we, we, we're doing something. We're, and whether if it's right or wrong, we're doing something that is definitely causing people to feel something and to be involved with what we're doing. And that's awesome, you know? That's so awesome, man. As well, like, I remember last time we spoke, you were saying how uh, you love Trouble in particular. Like, what what song are you most proud of listening back now to the album? Now it's nearly out. Is Trouble still the one, or is there is a, is one overtaken it? Or be interesting to get your take. I feel like it changes every day, because I still listen to the album all the time. Um, I feel like now One Man Army and Need to Know are, like, my current, like, top favorites. And it'll probably change again tomorrow and the day after that it'll change. But um, it feels good to know that the songs are constantly, constantly like revolving for me. That there isn't just like a single song that I just go, yeah, that's my favorite. You know, they're all my favorites. And it's because we spent so much time and we put so much effort and emotion into all the songs. So I have a kinship with all of it, you know. But I feel like Need to Know right now is really up there for me. Um, I feel like that song really has a lot of like deep emotional content from Kellen and I can I can feel that. I can definitely like sense that when I listen to it every single time and that doesn't change. So that's probably one of my favorite kind of amazing and like do you think that's one of the really special things about the album as well in that you know like you're saying you've listened so much to it and you listen to it constantly and your your favorite changes all the time. Do you think that that's gonna have the same effect on the people listening at home? Um, you can only hope, you know. It'll be interesting. I'm really interested to hear what uh, what people are going to uh, think and what their their personal favorites are going to be. And it's it's uh, that's always the fun part of putting out the album. Then you go, oh, like, and it's cool to always hear people's interpretations on it and how people connect with it. And you go, oh shit, like I didn't even I never even thought of that. Or you know, that's amazing that you know someone someone actually has a that that sort of connection with the song. I never thought of that. But so it's the uh, interesting and entertaining part of once the albums come out so cool uh, like just to finish up then I guess like you've uh, you've said a lot about like in our cover feature and that sort of thing you said a lot about how um, how this album followed a sort of couple of years of kind of kind of maybe a bit of uncertainty and stress and that sort of thing um, has this album really in the whole process of it has that really restored that comfort and that kind of confidence to the band Absolutely, yeah. I think this album was much needed for the confidence level in all of us. You know, I think the last two years have been been tough for everybody, especially for Kellen, but I mean, for the whole entire band. It's a lot of internal stuff and behind the scenes business stuff and making all of those changes and finally, you know, working on this record and for it to finally come out and everything kind of falling into place with it puts everyone in a really good headspace. So um, I think really all the negative stuff that we went through was much needed for us. And I think, it, um, you know, coming out in, the, in a positive way, um, you know, keeps us all humble. It keeps us all extremely grateful to be able to still do what we're doing, you know? Awesome. So huge shout out to Nick. Absolute legend. Um, Jack, what are you saying? Well, the thing about gossip is it's, it's an album we've talked about again and again and again and the title is so apt for it because it's, it's done its job and listen through it like I've these songs have clung to me more and more with each listen and I think it's after being very on the fence to begin with it's made me realize that sleeping sounds know what they're doing and after chatting with Kellen like on the earlier podcast hearing Nick's perspective as well and what he's got to say was interest interesting that because usually with band members, you get a different kind of feel from each person, but there's kind of shared unity all the way across Sleeping Silence with this. 
And one of the biggest things I heard him say was that if you're not getting those nerves when you're making music, you're doing it wrong. I think that's such an amazing thing to be able to do because they could just coast. They could just carry on as normal, yet they've put themselves out there in this way. And the benefits are paid off, like, as we say, Legends is the Team USA song. Like, they're getting their names in places which it was never never could have been when they were a metalcore band. And, yeah, just just the whole feeling of it, like, it's all, it's all going to plan, really, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I've heard Legends so many times over the past couple of months. Like, that song is everywhere. Oh, yeah. Like, it's... <laughs> the fact that it's it's so simple yet so effective yeah. and it's it's kind of like like there was it's a song which you you're gonna hear on telly and you're just gonna go that's sleeping with sirens <laughs> like what are they doing on telly oh on, no like like what, what on the radio in the EastEnders calf yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh I hope that happens yeah, yeah. It? it's like you go that's our band yeah. that's one of our bands in the real world yeah and and it's it's just it. And it's just working out so well. Like, I've, I'm, and I don't know, like, you can hear the confidence in their voice. And, yeah. like, it just going forward, it's like, I'd say happy release day as well. Oh, man. To them. And I just, I just really hope that the reaction they're getting from the kids that they're already singing these songs, I hope with the album tracks which are going to play out, people, like, um, take to them as much as they have these singles. For sure. And, like, across both our launch episode chat and this chat, they, they just seem so confident. Like, there's never a point where they've ever seemed nerve-wracked. And, like, that's fantastic to see. And it's a real testament to ripping up the rule book and kind of doing your own thing and doing what's right for you. And that's so brilliant in terms of, like, musical creativity. Yeah, Tamsin, are you, are you back in sirens? I mean... It's very different than new stuff. I think everyone's aware of that. But what I really liked what Nick said um, about like not being a bullshit artist and kind of being like that he likes reading the negative comments because then that means they're actually doing something different and they're doing something that people actually have like they've got stuff to talk about. Um, they're not just doing the same thing over it over and again. They're really pushing themselves and they've really like pushed themselves to the limits of you know their musicianship and what they can sort of incorporate into the songs. So fair play to them for like just kind of just doing what they want to do and not really listening to haters. Can't can't see mm. the negative stuff when mm. they've got their hater blockers on. <laughs> um, but yeah, like shout out to them. Happy release day. And I hope it all works out for them. I really do. For sure. And just a final thing, just that, that what Nick said at the end of our chat in that, um, you know, they could come back again after this album and sound completely different again. So exciting, Which you know. I hope they do. Yeah, same. Like, like, yeah. yeah, I think they're, they're going to keep reinventing themselves. Well, like, well think, of how, think of how it went from feel into madness yep. into this. Like, it's just... Like, but the fact is, this jump was a bit bigger than the other two. Like, if you put them all together, they're completely different records. Yeah. And, like, give it another two years, like, they could be, like, arena sized. But if they want to go that direction, like, they can go even poppier if they wish. They can go heavy again. Like, just that blank canvas is the most exciting part with Sirens at the minute. Huge, yeah. So, huge shout out to those guys. Happy release day. And, uh, guys, let us know what you think of the gossip with absolutely super interested to know what you think of it uh awesome so jack should we do some listeners questions yeah shanae dot fillin asks this is a really interesting one but she's going to her first concert in a couple of weeks which is against the current good place to start are there any tips on how to make it a better experience and i think i'll start by saying we all remember our first show mine was mcr playing black parade in full um and it's such an interesting environment like it's one you've never been to and all you've got to do is just like let yourself go with it like not be worried about the people that are around you not be worried about what they're doing or who they're with like just it's a place where you're able to be yourself and express yourself in whatever way you want to like if you want to scream every word at the top of your lungs you can if you want to stay in silence if you want to fiddle on your phone a bit like just just do it and also but also if we don't know if you're going on your own or like with friends. You're on your own and like you feel it. Just talk to someone around you. You're all there for the Concerts same reason. Concerts are the best place to make friends. I'm, absolutely. Like I'm. I've always been quite a shy person, so I I quite like standing on my own and fiddling with my phone. But if you're wanting to have a conversation with someone next year, you can. 
like just talk about the band or anything. Yeah, and, you and, already have like that one thing in common because you're at that gig because you like that band. Yeah, so yeah. So that's already like a talking point. Yeah, like there's and wait, there's bands who like shout out Creeper who they built their fan base um, like with the Kellis art and everything. Like they have fans meetups like where people on their fan groups like all go to a show together. So it's they're not like, on it's like Paris as well with the upcoming UK tour, they're setting up Facebook groups. So if you are going to a gig by yourself, if you don't really know anyone going, you can go onto the Facebook group and you can make friends before you go, which I think is an amazing thing to do because no one really likes going to a gig by themselves, you know. I, I do. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, yeah, I'm okay with this. But, you know, if, if you're still kind of new to going to gigs and everything, um, just, yeah, look up, like, search on Twitter, see who's going, get in touch with people before they go, see if they want to hang out. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, just and learn those songs inside out, you know, like like Jack said, just lose yourself in the experience. I mean, you know, against the current big up, like learn Wastelands, you know, learn Bright, learn Demons and just like sing along, completely lose it and just take it all in. I mean, that's that would be my advice. Really just yeah. enjoy it. I mean, I mean, like my one point that I kind of wrote down, which I think it stands for everyone at a show, whether you've been to a million or you're going to your first one, is just don't be a dick. <laughs> I mean, like, th the thing is, the thing is with shows, you're going to get people pushing in front of you, but, like, life's too short to start an argument with them if you accidentally get an elbow in the rib or something. But at the same time, if you are that person that's pushing in front of people, trying to get to the front, trying to get to the barrier, or get, get to your friends because you've got five pints in your hand or whatever, say, excuse me, say sorry, thank you, please. Like, manners don't cost anything. There's no need to be a dick to anyone at a show because you're all there for the same reason, because you love that band. Like, you should all be the best of friends. Like, don't be rude. Um, if you're at the barrier, you're getting a bit hot, make sure you drink some water, ask security for some water. No one wants to pass out a gig and then miss the whole thing. That's like yeah. the worst thing that can happen. Yeah. Um, and I know I'm a little bit like hypocritical with this, but don't record the entire thing on your phone. <laughs> it's okay. Like I totally do it. I record stuff on Instagram and Snapchat, chuck it on Twitter, take some photos, but do it maybe for like one song and then put your phone away and enjoy the moment. Enjoy the feeling you have of seeing your favorite band on stage in front of you. Don't stand there watching the like literally the entire thing for like it's stupid enjoy the moment yeah, yeah. and it's probably going to sound shit as well yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's not a bad few tips she'll be fine <laughs> um we all go mad is talking about our craziest concert experience which i've got to say one well, mine was possibly um slipknot when i saw them at ali pally a couple of years ago and this was down to the fact that i was quite riled up as well but um, when they, as many people know, when they play Spit Out, everyone gets on the floor. And um, when, um, when people weren't getting on the floor, I was so fueled by the moment and the anger, <laughs> I was screaming at people around me <laughs> to get down. Like, I, I remember shouting at someone, get down or I'm moshing you out. <laughs> and, and, the, and I got told off by security for it. They was like, dude, just calm down. It's a concert. I'm like, this is more than a concert. Um, but when like everyone did get down and like when everyone did jump up when it came back in, it was just the most cathartic feeling I've had at a show in a very long time. Like just everyone at, it at the same time, just in that moment together and just moshing like seven shades out of each other. It was it was wild. Like I can. I can still feel the sweat on my back from it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I'm going with uh, Your Demise uh, with Let Live in 2011 at the Underworld in London. Um, big up the YD squad. They're uh, sadly defunct now, but um, absolutely mental. Like It was like a half pipe of people. It was just constant stage diving. Um, the, the stage looked like it had been pretty much dismantled by like the second song. Um, and a guy was, uh, was dangling, this is really bad, but was dangling off the air conditioner unit, which then fell down and got thrown across the room. So um, yeah, dangerous, but, uh, but also fun. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also going to go for a show that was at Alexandra Palace. Um, when a day to remember took a trip there with their house tour, which oh, is still probably up. one of like the most mental, mental stage yeah. sets I've ever seen. <laughs> Scene. like if you if you didn't go to the tour basically they literally had a, a house 
on stage with them and like just, there would be songs where they would be like literally riffing from the roof and then the like the house would be on fire and then Jeremy came out in the little like blow up hamster ball thing and there were like CO2 cannons and it was just like the most insane production I've ever seen and then at the end like loads of people came on stage and were throwing toilet roll out and it was it was just like mental from start to finish and like oh it was amazing I loved it I'm f- I just think back to that show and like the fact that they pulled that off as well, which is wild. I've never, <laughs> se- I've never seen anyone do anything like that yeah. since. Amazing. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've never seen anything like it. Step so. up. Amazing bands. Um, and just to finish off, um, we've got. Oh god, this is a hard pronunciation. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Right, I'm gonna go like this. CVR, CVR, SH Killjoy. Um, I said, pick a band. Would you rather tour with them or record an entire album with them? I'm going to go first. Fallout Boy, tour, three months, bosh. <laughs> That's simple. Um, I record an album with the Absolute Kings in Seaway. Uh, I just want to up those 90s vibes they're doing on vacation. Amazing. And uh, I'd also like to not record with, but be there while Stand Atlantic record their debut album, because I just want to hear the songs first. I would like to go on tour with Panic at the Disco. <laughs> Wait. Fair because shout. I just feel Massive like that would shout. be like yeah, like literally a party for like two months straight, and like you can sing along to jazz and you'd, have you'd, some whiskey. You'd and... become a bottle of Patron, like <laughs> which is really dangerous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I just think that would be the most fun ever. Top questions, lads. <laughs> Cool, so shop.roxanne.tv. Uh, the special Sleeping With Sirens bundles are currently on sale. Uh, you can pick up the Super Fan bundle if you want everything involved, uh, or you can get the Legends bundle with limited edition cover, vinyl sticker, hand signed poster print by the whole band, or you can get the Gossip bundle with the exclusive tote bag designed by Mr. Kellen Quinn himself and an exclusive pocket mirror. Um, amazing stuff, really, really brilliant. The covers look absolutely amazing. And our associate editor, Rob Sace, uh, wrote a super interesting story about about how Gossip, which obviously we've spoken about in this episode already, came together and say that kind of hard two years the band had now pulled them back into the light and how they've ripped up the rule book. Super, super interesting. Also includes chats with Andy Beersack about Andy Black and Black Veil Bride, Seaway, fan question with Frank Iero, loads, loads more. Check it out, shop.rocksound.tv, buy it all up, it will sell out, so check it all out. The Rock Sound chart has also been updated on Spotify with brand new tunes, absolutely amazing. All of us in the office are like spinning it, I'd say pretty much daily. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's just a perfect combination of songs. It absolutely is. Like, if you want to recommend uh, the rock world to any friends or anything like that, absolutely perfect. Just uh, shoot them over the link, and um, it's the best representation of all the different sides of our world. Absolutely amazing. And um, our Scus TV show as well on daily. If you want to read along with the mag, learn more about the bands in there, that's on daily on Scus TV. So check that out. Interview two. We spoke to Matt Welsh from While She Sleeps. A super, super interesting chat. This so you are we a third album that came out earlier this year, all off their own back, completely uh, self and fan funded. Um, hit number ten, um, hit the top ten in uh, the UK album charts, which is amazing. You know, for uh, for something that was completely DIY, super, super testament to just how you know amazing the power of music can be, and how like you don't necessarily need any backing. You can completely set out on your own. Um, to taking risks, being bold and heavier music as well. We've spoken to a lot of bands recently about uh, heavier music becoming really big again and kind of hitting the mainstream. And um, it was really interesting to talk to Matt about how, you know, taking risks can lead to that. So super interesting. And also then he threw an exclusive in at the end about where While She Sleeps are going to go next. So I won't ruin it, no spoilers. Uh, but here's Matt Welsh from While She Sleeps. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast. I've been really looking forward to getting you guys on. Oh, no worries, man. Stoked for it. Awesome, man. Cool. So I just wanted to talk about kind of the year that yeah, you always had uh, and kind of how that's looking to yeah. the future and things like that. It's been pretty crazy. Um, like, I guess to kick off then, like the um, the sort of the DIY process of putting you always together and then like the huge fan mm-hmm. backing that it's had and then the huge success that it ended up having. Um, did that kind of fully reignite the band after a difficult period? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely, um, it definitely like, I don't, I don't know, like reset us a little bit. We were, it almost felt like this cycle felt like the beginning of our band again, but in a totally like, in a totally different dynamic and a new way of doing things. During Brain Rush, we weren't like, oh my God, this sucks. We were like, we were stoked. I mean, everything was great. We still felt like we we're doing the same thing as we do on this, where we sort of, go on a tour and hopefully 
make new fans and get that like excitement of like, oh, we definitely made like we definitely made some new fans tonight. And that like that happened all the way through Brainwashed and I think we felt slightly like the we worked really hard on Brainwashed and we felt a little bit like it like it like didn't launch quite how we wanted it to and it kind of like tripped up as it went out, you know, like because we really we were super happy with it, but we were a bit like it kind of like felt like it went under under a few people's radars, and then, which was part of the idea behind why we wanted to change the way we released this one. Um, but then, definitely towards the end of it, we were like, we were like, let's do something. It felt like it'd be far too normal and conventional to finish that cycle and be like, right, then let's just write another album and release it, like. So, I mean, what, what, like, how do you even expect people to get excited by delivering them the same piece of news that every band delivers their fan base with? Hey, we're going to make another record. It's like, oh, wow, what a surprise. I didn't expect you to do that. <laughs> yeah. Did a lot of that come from the kind of major label pressure and the way they wanted to do things, being a bit old-fashioned and things like that? Yeah, and, like, we, we had a lot of, like, ideas in Brainwashed where we are like, oh, let's, why don't we do this? It's really cool. And how those like, cool shit. And we just kind of got shot down, do you know what I mean? It was a bit like, it was a bit like being at school and having a project, and you're like, I, I've got a very good idea for this, and they're just like, oh, you can't do that. That doesn't meet school rules. And it's like, I'm like, what's the point? You know, was, we did this job so that we could, like, we pursued this so we could be our own boss, do you know what I mean? And and not be told no. Like, so why we've come full circle here? Why is someone taking this great idea and just saying no because? it's out of their comfort zone or like it's it's something that they've not done before. Do you know what I mean? Like I hate the idea of like getting signed and the label's like, we know exactly how to get you big because we're going to put you on the same, like put you through the same machine that we did another band. And it's like, well, that doesn't work like that. Cause so, I mean, we, we're all just artists. You don't, you, you can't put us through a machine and expect us to get as big. Do you know what I mean, it happens naturally. Do you think more bands should, should kind of take that uh, leaf out of that book as well? Because I mean, I've spoken to um, a few bands recently about the kind of there's a, especially in heavier music, there seems to be uh, a sense of fearlessness at the moment. A bit like with you guys and chat to other bands about you know yeah. bands trying new things. Do you think that's important that bands should be doing more of that? So oh, so important. Yeah, I think we just we live in a world where everything has a name on it. Do you know what I mean? And every, everything is, oh, that's that genre. That's this. And like, if you take all that away, it's just, it's just art and it's just expression. It's not, we don't have to put it into all these boxes that we get so confused about. And, and, and people get confused about it in general. Do you know what I mean, you can be like, I'm this type of person. I'm like, and I just don't, I think those things matter least. Do you know what I mean? And, and people should be, I always say to people about this, their art for their band and the way that they, you sort of, um, the way you like the aesthetic of your band. I'd meet so many people who just would be like, oh, well, it's all right for you because you guys can draw or whatever. And I'm like, I always just say to people, that everyone can draw. That's your, that's your, that's your character. It doesn't have to look like fucking Picasso. Like it's, it can, it can be shit, but that's, that's a natural representation of who you are as a creative and that's like i think it's so important that people express themselves like truly and 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 if you do it from you then that's that's as real as it could look which is the only thing you should sell you shouldn't be putting a front on on this thing that you're making and sometimes like this isn't a, like obviously this only works this works for some people but, but like if you get someone else and say hey make me a logo for our band then, then that's not necessarily a true representation of, of you. That's someone else's thing, do you know what I mean? And I always think people should be as true to themselves as they can and just have a go, do you know what I mean? You, people are so easy to shoot themselves down before they've tried because we, we seek approval so hugely that we, we're so afraid of doing so many things and I don't think people should be afraid of it. I think you should have a go at everything and that's how you find out what you're good at. Yeah, man, I totally agree. And like, do you think, as like with the kind of instant nature of the internet age and that sort of thing at the moment with music, do you think there is that kind of inhibits that sense of fearlessness of people? A lot of bands do kind of get get scared and think they can't necessarily be themselves. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that that comes from that like 
like I said, that sense of approval that everyone like looks for. And I, I just think it's important for people to encourage just, it's, and it, it's definitely happening. I mean, people are becoming more openly expressive of their, um, of their art and just them being you being you and not trying to fit into a box. And I think that's, that's a really key element for people making good music and people making bands that will survive. Because if you make a band that's trying to replicate another band or a style or because something else is successful and you're trying to like do something in the shadow with that, then you've already sort of shot yourself in the foot. Like, because, because you'll grow out of wanting to be that. Whereas if you just represent you, then your band can change like you can change and it and and your fans will acknowledge that and as they grow older your band will grow older with them it's like I think people worry too much <laughs> <laughs> I mean I worry I worry as well I mean we all worry but like it's important to I, I, I like I like talk to myself sometimes and like sometimes I do stuff and I'm just like what are you thinking like why are you even worried about that just like just do it and see what happens <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. Because I mean, like as well, a band like Architects. So you know, he, you've done a lot with this year, and you're supporting Ali Pali next year. Uh, they're a kind of yeah. band that I mean, they sound. Uh, you guys sound both very different, but you've kind of got that thing in common of you're both doing things that sound unique. I mean, do you feel that kind of between the two of you? Yeah, totally. And like they've been friends about for years, and we this year the bond between us has sort of reignited because we've had the chance to play together again and after everything they've been through in the last in the last year and, and more than that I think it gave it gave them this like weird to say but like a almost like a kick to to be like this is important and this like matters to so many people and it's I think it's a really important thing that UK has bands speaking good messages to people and like showing that we're all friends and we're all, I think the UK has an amazing circle of bands now, really good bands that, that are all friends and all support each other, whether it be different. And even if some bands might not like necessarily the music or whatever the other bands play, we're still all very supportive of each other because we back what, what everyone's doing and we're part of one big big movement together really so i think it's important that we so everyone has each other's back yeah totally man i totally agree and like ali pally itself uh, is that going to be quite the milestone for sleeps god yeah huge huge moment like dan texted me about that show a while ago and was like we're gonna do this do you want to do it with us and i was just like there isn't like there literally isn't a chance in hell that we're gonna say no to, to to that opportunity, just the fact that they're doing such a bold thing by by taking heavy music to a stage that big in the UK, and then and then want us involved with it, just makes it feel even more like this amazing community that that we've sort of that they've built and that we've been part of. Like, I think it's an amazing thing. It's something that we didn't even question not being part of. Amazing, man. I can't wait. Uh, I mean, as well, like with you guys yeah. getting a top 10 album and like with, uh, with Ali Pali yeah. nearly sold out now. And like, do you think that's a real statement for kind of heavier, more challenging music and that, you know, people really, really care about this stuff and that you, it, when you show that you can do so many fearless things, it's, uh, it really opens totally. the door. Totally. I think when, when our record charted, we all just like, we were so overwhelmed and we were like, holy shit, like that, proved to me completely that there's this incredible force out there and it almost like it almost um like was replicated in the way that the general election went and how many young people sort of stood up and were like i'm put i'm like the amount of young voters on this latest election were like was so amazing because that was people going all these things happening are sort of reminding everyone that we are super powerful if we all if we all speak at the same say the same thing at the same time. Do you know what I mean? We've we've always really believed in that that if everyone's pulling in different directions then we aren't gonna get anywhere. But if everyone sort of if everyone puts it all together, then we've got this huge voice and like we independently released a record that was sat next to Drake in the charts. Do you know what I mean? That's that blew my fucking mind. And like, I actually had this conversation with architects in like 2012 
uh, and I said to them, I think, I think metal will be, will make it, will be an, an arena thing. Bands like, bands like us will eventually be an arena thing because if we just don't stop and if we don't, people always say like, how's they going to like, where's the next big headliners or where's the next big bands? And the, those bands that are the big headliners, they're only there because they're, because they're like 20, 30 years into their career. And it, it, it's more of like an attitude of not giving up. I think that bands like Architects will be that if they, if they carry on, which like exactly like they are doing. And, and Ali Pali is just complete proof of that. Like there's enough, eventually that it is going to be that big. Do you know what I mean? Cause um, that's getting proven everywhere because of people sort of standing up and saying, becoming part of things and saying what they think. Yeah, man, I know it's absolutely incredible to see and I totally agree. And I mean, like in terms of you guys with that in mind, does that mean there's just like this fire in the belly now, like more than ever before? And like, you're just like pushing forward with like, you say you're just never going to stop. I mean, is it like, you know, that sort of song ideas and that sort of thing? Do you reckon that will come sooner rather than later because of that? Yeah, we've actually already started a little bit. <laughs> um, Amazing. I'm like, I'm sorting warehouse out now and Sean's just, he's literally just about to turn up and we've, we've actually really gutted the studio uh, and we're giving it like a, a fresh lick so we can actually, we've got a bit of time off now until we go to America and it's, it's the first break we've had for, but what basically since we got the warehouse and we started building, it's the first time that we've actually not got a specific task to do. So we're kind of like, well, let's, let's go. Let's like, if we're feeling creative, then let's, let's be able to use the space. That's why we're sort of giving it a flip and a bit of, it's like an autumn spring clean. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, uh, we actually, we, we drove to London on Monday to do our visas. And during the journey, we've been, we saw this idea for something that I cannot tell you about to do with what might be the next record sort of came to life. And we all just got incredibly excited by this absolutely fucking bonkers idea that we've come up with um <laughs> and yeah hold me to that <laughs> but um but yeah we all got super excited at this thing of like oh my god like it was the it, for me it was like one of the first moments since you always release where i'm like net what next do you know what i mean i was like once a record comes out i kind of just i like to just ride it for a bit i don't want to push myself into feeling creative i'll I'll feel creative when it comes and and it sort of came the other day and it was a very exciting feeling wow man I cannot wait to find out what that is <laughs> <laughs> it's mental if we if slash when it happens I hope you remember this conversation and you'll be like the fucking madman <laughs> Awesome. So yeah, really, really interesting. Can't believe that little exclusive at the end. Uh, Tamsin, what are you saying on Matt Welsh? I mean, I think if there's one band that have proven this year that hard work really does pay off, it's While She Sleeps. Like, they absolutely smashed that album campaign. Like, uh, like hands up, I've never been a massive follower of the bands. They've always kind of been just like a little bit too heavy for me. Um, but... Even that that new album, I enjoy it. I think it's brilliant. And getting a top ten album when you've got no label backing, when you've you're kind of at a point where you're like, you know, is this gonna work now? Let's let's build a warehouse, live in it, record in it, <laughs> do everything in it, see what happens. And this is the outcome. Like it's absolutely insane. Um, and it was a really really interesting chat. Actually, I really enjoyed it. He had a lot to talk about, and I really liked. The way he spoke about the UK rock scene at the moment, um, particularly Architects as well, who obviously they're playing Alexandra Palace with, um, which is going to be ridiculous. Oh, God, um, yeah. But just like the way he was saying, you know, it's so important to have bands that are, are talking about things, that are, have good messages to spread to their fans, even if they are going through really, really troubled times. Um, and just like the bands just having each other's backs. And like, I don't think any, I don't think f as fans, and people on the outside really realise how important it is for the the UK alternative rock scene to for, to really come together and to each have each other's backs and help you know boost each other when in, when new records are out and things. Um, so yeah, I'm like I, I thought that was a brilliant shout, shout out, Matt. 
Amazing. Yeah, big shout out to him. Like, just super, super interesting, like Tamsin said. I mean, um, I, I can't wait as well to know what they're going to do next after all this success and these, you know, I mean, because You Are We is an album of a lot of left turns. Like, every song goes in so many different ways that I, I'm, I'm so intrigued as to these uh, crazy things that he's hinting at. Jack, you got any idea? I mean, I've, the thing about Sleeps is I... I remember watching Sleeps play to 40 people in the upstairs of the Leeds cockpit on Renoa's uh, last tour. Shout out Renoa forever and always. Um, but, and to see them in the position they are now where they're playing to, like they've got national radio press, they're playing to huge rooms and they're not that little metalcore band anymore. Like they've expanded their sound into something which like, transcends heavy music it transcends rock music as a whole and they can do anything i say i do say it a lot that bands like there's a lot of bands in our world who can actively they can go in any direction right now and which is an amazing thing and i think sleep's being kind of like the flag bearers of that and showing that you don't need a label you don't need all these people telling you what you need your music to do. You can do it on your own. You can graft it out on your own is like, it's a proper way for things to be going. Like as, as Matt was saying, like having that confidence to be on their own and make these decisions and knowing that people are going to support it. Like that, that pledge campaign was mad. Like it's just the thing and the things they were offering for it. And like the commitment they had to that when so many people could just go, Oh, we'll do a sign poster for you. Like they're saying, Here's a ring made out of a guitar string. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, here's a necklace with a plectrum. Like, come do gang vocals. Like, Loz will teach you how to sing. Yeah. And then you can sing on the album. Like, that's amazing. Um, but my biggest thing, and I've underlined it twice on my notes, the fact that you're saying in, when that comes, it could be an arena thing. While she sleeps in arenas, as, like, as a headlining band, like... I think I don't, I don't see any reason why not right now. And if they carry on just being as creative and ambitious and confident in what they're doing and the art they're making, like there's no reason that can't be a thing. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, yeah, like you said, this world is so exciting to be in at the moment because all these bands can go in so many different directions. Uh, and While She Sleeps, like you say, absolute pinnacle of that. Um, and yeah, just crazy thinking about it. I mean, I was like you, I, I saw that band when they were playing to 40 people, you know, back on the, the, the North Sands for nothing. It's just like, to think about where they are now, absolutely insane. So um, yeah, more on that, I guess, when they, they decide to tell us more. But <laughs> Drop their bonkers ideas. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, let them fester for a bit, like <laughs> get... Get get a bit of um get a bit of age in them and then just let them implode everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Big up like, while she sleeps. I think that's how they make wine. I think like like good wine or whiskey. It takes that time and then suddenly it's like boom. <laughs> Amazing. Um, cool. So uh, RS shouts. Um, so this week we thought again we'd link in what we've been talking about. So we're going to talk about the best comeback album. So um, obviously while she sleeps doing so well with you are we. Um, we're going to go down that route and delve back a little bit and give our particular recommendation of our favourites. So um, let's go around the table, give it to Tamsin first. I'm going to throw a curveball with this one and I'm going to go for an album that's not yet released. Oh, go for because it. Because I have that much faith that it's going to be the comeback album of my entire existence. Oh, it's, wow. It's uh, the new Dangerous Summer album. Oh, wow. Shout. Yeah, good because shout. Because that is yeah. like, they're, they're po posting a lot about like studio updates and like, oh, we're going to be announcing tours and there is going to be a UK tour as well. And I'm literally so excited for this album. You have no idea. <laughs> like all of their albums are just masterpieces. And I th there's so much to talk about. At, like with this new record, they've been through quite a lot as a band, like more kind of personally and with, you know, politics within the band and stuff. I think there's going to be a lot of really, really raw emotion coming out in this album. And I am so stoked for it. You have no idea. Wow, uh, what an answer. I, I'm going to go with um, who we were talking about earlier on the show, actually. All Time Low. Uh, I'm going to go with Don't Panic. Uh, it's come up on the show before, actually. Um, but they, they made uh, Dirty Work, which was their kind of first proper foray into the pop world. And uh, while it's still a good album and it's got a proper slew of bangers on it, uh, I think they weren't too happy with kind of how it came out as a whole. Um, so they went back and they made this album called Don't Panic that was essentially kind of, I guess, a return to the uh, the rocky, more pop-punky roots of before, but mixed with this slight 
pop element that they brought in alongside some 90s elements as well and it's just the perfect mix like honestly it's one of my favorite albums of this decade banger from track one all the way to the end um it, it's it's one of the best kind of i don't you can't even slap a genre label on it it's uh, it's my favorite all-time low album it's absolutely amazing and uh, for baltimore it's one of the best songs of this decade so yeah i'm gonna go with an album which may not have even existed common courtesy by a day to remember oh in terms when you said that i was just like how what As oh in, like, yeah i'm not entirely <laughs> sure if it ever existed oh, yeah. but <laughs> the, the, it was yeah. great now i was gonna say, no, no, I was yeah. gonna say <laughs> no i was gonna say did you notice that little pause for emphasis just so i could watch your eye flicker like, <laughs> like, that, like that little thing like what's he what's he on about but no common courtesy the album which may not have even existed may not have even come out we may not be able to talk about it now and the way that like the time that it took for that album to be sorted when it actually dropped, it was a day to remember completely coming into her own, taking all the elements which came, like the heaviness of Homesick, the pop sensibility of what separates me from you, and just making this album which blended them together, like the brutality of the opening five tracks, the tenderness of the like second half of the album, just working in harmony. It's like their, it's, people go with Homesick as their favorite album, but Common Courtesy is their finest, I believe. Um, even though I am a big What Separates Me From You fan, but this was just like, it was it was the album which made a day to remember what they are now. And it, I think it's the reason that they're able to play to thousands of people around the world because they just mastered that mix, like just transcended everything that went before and did their own thing yet just, and, and also just the idea that like people have been waiting for so long. And then when City of Ocala comes in, I remember sitting like it's, it's when people say, oh, remember where you, when David Beckham scored that free kick against Greece? I remember where I was when I listened to Common Courtesy for the first time. So do I. Yeah, I can yeah. remember it as well. Yeah. yeah. And when that, and when City of Ocala comes in, I remember, I was laid in bed and I just like fist bumped. Oh, that first fuck, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. like I scared my dog so much. Like, <laughs> like, 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 like he was fast asleep and he just went, whoop. Because <laughs> I did it with such ferocity. Because yeah, it was literally like, we didn't know it was going to come out until it, that literally, literally that midnight, like, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It like, here's our album. Yeah, and it was, everyone was like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Remember, I remember waking up like, just going to my computer in my room and it was like the first thing I did that day was just like bought the album and was just like holy crap <laughs> yeah. this yeah. is insane what a day yeah it's like it's, like, it's better than Christmas that year yeah. <laughs> and I agree it is their best album yeah 100% Amazing. So uh, check all those albums out. Let us know what your fave is. And uh, yeah, let us know your answer. We'd be super interested to know. Um, cool. So shop.rocksound.tv. Uh, as I said earlier in the show, the Stephen with Sirens bundles are on sale now. Super, super interesting story of gossip. If you want to find out every little bit of detail, check it out. Amazing story by our associate editor, Rob Sace. Um, you can get the super fan bundle if you want everything in one, if you want to go full hog on it. But uh, Legends bundle includes limited edition cover, vinyl sticker, and a hand-signed poster print by the whole band. Or you can go for the gossip bundle, which includes an exclusive tote bag designed by Kellen Quinn and an exclusive pocket mirror as well. Absolutely amazing. They look incredible. Check them out. Buy them up. They are going to sell out. So uh, yeah, buy them up. Send us pictures of you uh, holding your magazine up and uh, tell us what your favourite bit of the mag is. Uh, also includes uh, chats with Andy Beersack, Seaway, Frank Iero. Amazing. So check it all out. The Rock Sound chart has also been updated on Spotify. All our Spotify players are on there. Subscribe to all of those, especially the Rock Sound chart. Absolutely amazing. If you want to know what's going on in the Rock Sound world, all different corners are represented. So many bangers. Um, the Scuzz TV show is also on daily. As I say, if you want to read along and watch along with the magazine, if you want to find out more about the bands involved, all the bangers, all their current bangers are on the show. So that's daily on Scuzz TV. Check it all out. Let us know your favourite thing. Let us know what you're thinking. And yeah, just talk to us. So uh, yeah, we've come to an end again. Always the same every week. It really is. Like, it just like, suddenly creeps it, up, it, it, doesn't it? It just flies by. It's too much fun we need to stop having so much fun <laughs> <laughs> we do yeah. uh, we hope you guys are having fun out there as well listening um, so next week we are going to have uh, the amazing Burt McCracken from The Used and uh, the amazing Lights and more so stay tuned for all of that going to be incredible um, yeah Tamsin you had a good time I've had a really nice time <laughs> good Jack yeah I've had a cracking time it's amazing yeah been incredible uh, we'll see you guys next week bye love bye. you bye